Good evening. This is a meeting of the Transportation Commission of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Wilmette. Staff will now, now call the roll. Commissioner Gates. Present. Commissioner Schmidt. Uh, present. Commissioner Tyner. Present. Commissioner Hayes is absent. Commissioner Levy is also absent and Commissioner Kibi Kibidi um, actually resigned this week. So, and Chair Brabant is present. This meeting is being conducted remotely via Microsoft Teams. For those watching this video in the future, the state of Illinois is currently under a stay at home order issued by Governor J.B. Pritzker due to the coronavirus global pandemic. As a result, all in-person governmental meetings have been canceled. However, the Open Meetings Act now permits electronic meetings of governmental bodies like the Transportation Commission, and this evening we are conducting our business in compliance with the state law. This meeting is being broadcast on the internet on YouTube live, and the URL for that is www.youtube.com for slash user for slash village of Wilmet for slash live. If you would like to participate in the meeting, you may use the Microsoft Teams app on any device for free. No sign in required. The link to join each meeting is posted on the website calendar at www.wilmet.com slash calendar. The meeting will be archived on the village's website as we do with our other televised public meetings. A remote meeting requires a different mechanic for public participation. To ensure that our residents, business owners, and other interested parties have the opportunity to participate in this meeting, we have solicited public comment prior to the start of the meeting via email. If you send an email to public comment at wilmet.com prior to the start of the meeting, our staff will read the email during public comment portion of our agenda. If members of the public who are watching the broadcast would like to participate during the designated public comment periods, you may submit your comments through YouTube Live at the appropriate time, and a member of the village staff will read your comment to the Transportation Commission. All comments to the Transportation Commission will be recorded in the meeting minutes as we typically do. Everyone will have joined the meeting today muted. When it is time for public comments, those joining through Teams can toggle their mute status by clicking on the microphone icon on the meeting toolbar. Those joining us by audio conference dial-in can toggle their mute status by pressing star six. Only attendees can unmute themselves. No one can unmute another attendee. And just a reminder that public comment can also be provided by emailing public comment at wilmet.com or through the village's YouTube live stream. Before the meeting, the Transportation Commission receives a packet of agenda materials. These materials are also posted on wilmet.com so that residents and other interested parties can review the very same materials that the Transportation Commission members received. This meeting packet contains the agenda, minutes of the last commission meeting, one agenda item, and public comment. Uh, we will move on uh, to item three uh, on the agenda, but uh, if I may, before I turn it over, I do want to take a second to recognize that Bridget was named uh, one of the 10 public works leaders by APWA uh, this year and uh, shouldn't take a national award for us to appreciate that we have uh, exceptional leadership in our department, but it's a good reminder of, of her and her staff and the great work they do on behalf of the residents of uh, Wilmette. Uh, so with that, we will move on uh, to uh, Actual, actually, item two, approval of the minutes of the February 16th meeting of the Transportation Commission. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. Uh, uh, Commissioner Tyner, a uh, motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Gates, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, with that, we have uh, approval of the minutes from the February 16th meeting of the Transportation Commission. Uh, item three, the main event for this evening, approval of the annual school crossing guard report. Um, and I will uh, turn that over to uh, get some background from the police department and any other village staff uh, to provide. Uh, thanks, Commissioner. Um, yep. This is Kyle Murphy, police chief. So each year, 
the police department conducts an annual assessment of the cross and guard positions in the village for the purposes of the assessment um, is to, to determine the community needs are being met and to verify that our resources are being properly deployed. Um, as a point of reference in 2021, the police department's budget for um, fulfilling these cross and guard positions was $285,000. Um, we currently manage 17 school crossings uh, throughout the village and they're staffed by 17 uh, full time adult school crossing guards and ideally we'd have a minimum of two substitute adult crossing guards. Currently one of those substitute positions is vacant. Um, in, in approximately 2017 district 39 had a schedule change which added hours to several crossings and it equated to about a $20,000 annual expense um, increase. And uh, for the fall of 2020, they adjusted their learning hours uh, further extending um, one hour additionally for five days a week. And that that adjustment resulted in a $35,000 uh, increase for our, for our budget. Um, the vacancies within the crossing guards, uh, typically they're filled by the substitute crossing guards. If those can't be met, they're filled by police department uh, staff personnel. So this this winter when there was more in, in person student learning, um, the police department was relied upon 81 times to fill vacancies from crossing guards from January through March. Um, we can attribute this to uh, staffing issues with with having one vacant um, substitute position open uh, in addition to the um, frigid frigid winter we experienced. Um, why is this important to point out? Because ideally we wouldn't rely upon police personnel um, to fill these crossings because we need them for other critical services within the village. Uh, in the course of the review, um, we we came across two, two locations that we're going to recommend to um, study further next school year. Um, one being uh, the, the location at 1740 Lake, so Lake and Ridge. So St. Joseph School had reduced their um, their learning at that building to kindergarten only when they combined with uh, St. Francis. And um, next year, I think when we have the other schools all in person learning, that'll give us an adequate picture of what the usage of that intersection is like, and then if the determination or recommendation is to um, remove that crossing guard location, then we have ample time to communicate that with uh, affected families and parents as, as well as the school. Um, engineering also received a request uh, for us to look at Wilmette and Ridge. Um, this, this intersection is currently not along a school walking route. Um, uh, however, based upon the location of the uh, resident with the request, um, we felt it uh, necessary that we should at least look at it and see um, if it warrants consideration for a, for a crossing guard in the future. Another area that the police department had looked at uh, this past year was um, traffic flow concerns uh, surrounding Harper Elementary School. So we looked at it and uh, we did not observe any safety concerns, um, but this area is is on the uh, forefront of our mind as well as engineering and public works due to the stormwater project that's anticipated for uh, the spring of 2022. Um, so that that intersection and location will be uh, will be looked at and um, Bridget and her team are already in communication with the uh, stakeholders, the school district as well as families over there as far as um, safety measures that are going to be put in place during the construction period. Um, during this review and of these crossing locations, we had uh, observed several crosswalk striping needs that uh, you know that should be updated. We we brought it to engineering and public works, and uh, they jumped on it and uh, have it scheduled to update this striping um, uh, throughout the next year. Um, <clears throat> None of the crossings, the current crossing locations have, have changed. So in, in the report, you'll see um, the crossing locations with the guards and that's essentially remained the same. Um, unfortunately, you know, due to the pandemic, we were not able to uh, perform or conduct any reliable uh, counts 
in uh, this past school year, but we anticipate that we'll be able to do that um, next school year. And that's a basic summary of, uh, of our report. Are there any questions? I have a quick question. Uh, can you tell us what's being done to fill that uh, vacancy in the substitute <clears throat> crossing guard? It's always been uh, challenging for us to fill those fill those positions. Um, we're we advertise. We have a you know open advertisement for that position. Um, and we've probably had it posted for over a couple of years, and um, our crossing guards are. Um, being aged, so uh, sometimes um, we have shuffled them through from substitute positions to full time positions for various um, you know personal needs. But um, it's 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 proved to be uh, difficult positions to to fill. Thank you. Just just a sort of point of order question. Uh, I know there was a couple of emails in the, the second packet that went out also related to this topic. When do we discuss those now or, or what's the process for that? Uh, I'm not sure if that's the, the chief or, or Bridget. I'm, I'm not sure um, what issues you're referencing. I, I can, Dan, do you want me to briefly summarize those? Yeah, go right ahead. OK, um, thank you, Commissioner Gates. Yes, we did just within the last uh, 24 hours receive a few requests for crossing guard locations to be considered. The first was at the intersection of Illinois and Hibbard Road. And you may recall this was one of the five intersections that the commission looked at in detail in 2018. Um, we did a matrix of criteria that the crossing guard policy references to determine whether crossing guards are are warranted or not and at Illinois and Hibbard they are not based on the current policy and that's really based on a couple of issues primarily that Illinois and Hibbard is not on an official school walking route the good news is Avoca 37 received a grant to develop a school walking route and we'll be bringing that forth to the commission in the near future um, for review and approval um, it's also a fully controlled intersection. It's an all-way stop, and it's referenced in the policy as not uh, necessarily needing a guard because of the controlled traffic through that intersection. And then finally, the age of the school children is a little bit older than what the policy recognizes for crossing guards. All this said, um, this is an annual review, so we can um, bring any of these issues back up at any time. Um, the second location was a request for crossing guards at the Edens on-ramp and off-ramp. Um, intersections on Lake Avenue across the at the bridge. Um, Lake Avenue has a long history of being concerning to our residents and to the commission. Um, we're in the process of um, putting together our multi or I'm sorry, master bike and active transportation plan and Lake Avenue is is a high priority corridor to receive pet improvements. And it's also going to be included in that safe routes to school um study and and looked at for safety as well so so while we can't recommend crossing guards at this time um, it is something that's on our radar and the third location is a new location it was uh, locust and glenview road and i actually had a nice conversation with this uh, uh, lovely couple who sent in the request and it was in regard to their junior high student um, who uses locust road to get to the junior high um, unfortunately, uh, Locust Road is not a school walking route. Sunset is because it goes into Ramona School, which is elementary versus the junior high, which is a little bit older student. Um, that said, I assured the resident that safety is paramount. And even though based on some of that basic criteria, Locust and Glenview would not be considered, that we would go through the mechanics of the policy just to make sure there wasn't a safety concern there that we, we need to be aware of. Um, I should also note that Glenview Road and Locust Road are part of the Master Bike and Active Transportation Plan high priority, so we'll be looking at that in greater detail as well. And I think the the fourth piece of information is not related to the um, crossing guard. It was a um, letter with several requests from the bike will met folks, and um, that's hey, something yeah, that we'll respond to. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, may, may I just request a clarification? It has the approval as agenda item three, but before public comment, um, are we going to open it up if there are additional comments on the crossing guard before we move uh, to approve? Okay. Um, so uh, any other questions from the commissioners? Okay. I think with that, if we have any questions that have come in via the YouTube live channel, or if anyone has, has joined with an interest in. Um, yeah, we don't have anything on YouTube yet. Okay. Do we have anyone who has joined uh, Teams? It does not appear. So should we give it a moment, make sure no comments come in? I'd say given that the village is, is going to be looking at the various locations that were raised, um, I, I think we can move ahead. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, may I uh, get a motion to approve the annual uh, school crossing guard report? I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay, and a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor of approving the annual school crossing guard report, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, um, I uh, we move up, I guess, public comment on any other topic at this point. Um, I'm thinking, has anything come in on YouTube? Uh, no, we don't have anything. Okay, it does not appear that anyone has joined Teams. Any public comment out there? Okay, um, agenda item five, old business. Anything uh, from the staff? Uh, Dan, you nodded. Okay, old business. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to provide a couple of quick updates. Uh, as you may recall, back in February, the commission approved proceeding with a traffic calming plan on Elmwood Avenue between Hunter and Ridge Roads. Um, so since then, uh, the Village staff has balloted the residents on that block. Uh, the policy requires a favorable vote of 60% of the households on the affected street. Um, there are 52 households on the street, and to date, we've received 31 in support of the plan, seven not in favor of the plan, and so far 14 with no response. Uh, so right now uh, we are just looking for one more vote in favor and then we'll have enough support to move forward with the plan. Uh, so we'll probably prepare a third and final notice here in the coming weeks uh, to try to get uh, responses out of these last 14 homes. Um, also, uh, an update with uh, regarding the bike plan implementation. Uh, the village is going to be accepting proposals from consultants next week uh, to work on a plan for implementation of the master bike and active transportation plan. So what this means is that we anticipate uh, the Transportation Commission will have opportunities to provide guidance on implementation plan at several meetings this fall. So uh, we'll we'll begin going on implementation of that plan here very soon. So that's exciting news, and you all will have the opportunity to be involved. And that's it for old business. Um, Dan Greenleaf, you might want to mention as well. Oh yeah, uh, we're also um, receiving proposals for implementation of the bike accommodations on Greenleaf. Uh, so that's also going to come in front of you prior to the bike plan implementation is we we did have uh, a budget line item for implementation on Greenleaf Avenue this year. Uh, so that that'll be coming this summer. You'll see a concept plan. Uh, we'll invite the residents of that block to review the plan and uh, we'll be seeking uh, approval of the, the accommodations on Greenleaf. Okay. Um, 
And I think that's, that's, kind, of old and, that's kind of old and new business. Yeah. Um, and any additional new business? Um, well, it does sound like after a somewhat uh, quiet uh, pandemic period between the Elmwood traffic calming, the proposals on Greenleaf, the implementation of the master bike pan plan, and the Avoca safe routes to schools, we're going to have uh, several things to, to uh, look forward to in the, the coming months. And the fact that we can uh, begin to meet in person again will, uh, will be lovely. So. Um, Hearing nothing else, uh, the uh, I, have, I have one, one item. Um, we need to talk about this bike walk, Wilmette. That's, that was comment. sort of what I, I, I was just going to ask. Uh, sorry, not to cut you off then. Um, just, and I don't want to put you on the spot because I mean, I, we just got this email, you know, a few minutes ago. So I haven't even at myself had the real time to process it. But uh, can the village, um, after giving a proper review, comment in particular i'm interested in uh, it seems like they have a point or or this the, the letter makes a point about um uh, our sidewalk policy and I'm, I'm just curious if that if, if what if you know i'd like i'd like the village just sort of some thoughts on that maybe for the next meeting i don't you know again i don't want to put anyone on the spot at this moment but it, they're raising an issue and saying that we're maybe not in line with other communities and i'm just i don't know if that's true or not but i'd, I'd like to ask that we get that yeah, some sort of response on that. I can actually give you a, a, a bit of an update on that, okay. Commissioner Gates and, and everybody. Um, this is actually another high priority of the village board as well. And the plan is, I believe in July, to take it um, a sidewalk policy discussion to the Municipal Services Committee of the village board, because it really does surround a lot of policy um, changes perhaps. So. That um, will happen in July, and then it'll go to the full village board for review. I'm not sure that it'll come to the Transportation Commission, but we'll certainly keep you updated. And um, really, our staff goal right now, we're spending a lot of time researching what other communities are doing and, and trying to take the best of the policies for a recommendation for the committee to consider. I think that's a great response. Thank you. Okay, and any uh, other sure. <laughs> or more more on that topic, Ben? Well, I just again, I haven't even read it because I've been in the car for three or four hours before this meeting. So um, I, I I just is this something that we're going to talk about at the next meeting or what's the <laughs> I, I'm not sure I understand. The, here's a here's a four page letter uh, process it immediately. And, uh, you know, they're requesting to apparently, you know, pass a motion to do something, which I, again, I haven't read it yet, so I don't even know what, what, what they're asking for, but <laughs> is there anything else we need to talk about for this, or is this just something for us to noodle on um, and think about for the, the next meeting um, or or not address at all? Well, personally, I'd like, as Bridget mentioned, where we're, she's going to do kind of the comparative, the comparative study of, of what the policies are in, in other kind of I don't know if it's neighboring or similarly aged communities, communities with similar uh, context to, to ours. I, I'd like to at least have the basis of comparison. Um, and I guess I don't I don't know in terms of policy, does our commission or they want guidance? I'm sorry, I believe they want guidance, not policy. If I read again, read it quickly. Um, I don't know what what exactly is the purview of our entity versus the village and and the engineering staff who's responsible and the village who's responsible for the liability of everything they do. Right, right. I think in this case, a committee of the board is the best place to approve uh, change in sidewalk policy. I, I think I speak for the commission when we support connectivity of our sidewalk network. I think that just makes good sense. Where the policy component comes in is um, changing people's front yards and removing vegetation and impacting what they're used to when they bought their home. And, and that's really, that's where the policy decisions come in by the, um, by the board members, the elected officials. Yes. And when, with respect to Commissioner Schmidt's question, I, I, I agree. I, I haven't had a chance to review that 
um, letter from Bike Wilmette as well, or Walk Bike Wilmette. So the plan would be for our staff to go through it in detail, um, prepare a response to them, and then we'll make sure that that you get a copy of it. Um, if if not prior at the next meeting would be prior to the next meeting as soon as we develop that response. It, it does appear a discussion covered at least two of their major bullet points, one of them being Greenleaf and the other being uh, the sidewalk item. So we are at least, you know, immediately covering some of it to some extent. Right. And, and exactly. And, and if you remember, I think the third component was um, the Transportation Commission's um, participation in the implementation of the bike plan. And we've got that on the agenda as well. So I think we've generally hit all three points. Um, and I'll admit there are some, you know, I'm, I'm curious, you know, right now you can only make a request for sidewalk installation. It can, you can revisit it every four years. They're wanting to drop it to every 18 months. Um, I'd be on something like that aggressive to be able to just, you know, keep bringing the same thing. I'd be curious to see what our neighboring communities were doing. Um, just from comparative purposes. So. Um, I look forward to hearing more about this. Uh, it's it's certainly interesting, but I've just barely digested it. So I'm, I'm also uh, curious a little bit about how we're interpreting the, the non responses. It sounds like we're currently they sort of just go in, I guess, essentially in the no category. Is, is that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. We, we, the, would, we couldn't consider. Yeah, we wouldn't take them out of the equation. And then given uh, given that uh, all of the um, communication to them, essentially are we just dropping a letter off and, and asking them to to respond? Um, I'm just going to look at the other side of this. I can imagine where, yeah, if this is not home, we're not responding to that. Do we knock on their door or something? Uh, this, this last second attempt was a hand-delivered letter that allowed for a paper ballot to be mailed to the village or uh, there was a link to do an electronic uh, ballot as well. Okay. Uh, anything else? Any other questions in kind of the, the supplemental correspondence? Okay. Now hearing none, uh, the uh, final item on the agenda for this evening is a uh, meeting adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? We make a motion that we adjourn tonight's meeting. Uh, ben, then do you wish to sec second I'll Commissioner second. Schmidt? I'll okay, second. Commissioner okay. Schmidt seconds that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that concludes tonight's meeting of the Transportation Commission. Thank you all for attending.